some of the benefits, some of the advantages of a home gym, first off, I think one of the more obvious ones is it can save you money if you're comparing it to a commercial gym. Uh, based on membership fees, parking, travel expenses, gas. And I live in Toronto. I'm not sure what it, the situation is like for other people watching this, but parking is ridiculous. And uh, and you know, gym membership fees vary, but you can save a lot of money if you make the small upfront investment in, in setting yourself up with a home gym. And that also ties into saving yourself a significant amount of time. So we already mentioned uh, travel time. Um, and saving yourself the parking expenses, but time is money, and for a lot of people, uh, time is also time that could be spent with their family and other other endeavors. So if you have a gym right downstairs or out in your shed, or your garage, that obviously saves a significant amount of time and makes it extremely convenient. <clears throat> and the one big excuse I have with a lot of clients for not working out is number one, they don't have the time, and number two, they they just they're not motivated or they don't have the energy so if you can reduce the number of excuses for missing your workouts and it's right there it's convenient then that's worth the investment in and of itself um, I'm just gonna pop up a little uh, screen share here Are you guys okay with uh, not seeing my pretty face and uh, I'll give you some information here um, we already talked about a lot of the uh, advantages as far as time and money convenience avoiding travel um, you get to choose your own music, like you heard there in the background, maybe. Yeah. Uh, some of the disadvantages for uh, a gym is you may be training alone, so safety might be an issue. Uh, at a gym, uh, even if they're uh, crappy spotters, at least there are people around that could help you if you're, uh, you're, you're stuck, you're in a, in a you know, dangerous situation. You obviously get usually get a larger variety of equipment at a gym, and you, some people find it motivating just to train in an environment where there's a lot of uh, other people around. Um, so anyway, that sums it up nicely. For me, a big one was uh, being able to use chalk because, I mean, even a number of the uh, big mainstream gyms that have all sorts of free weights frowned on, on using chalk. You have someone looking yeah. over your shoulder, uh, you know, telling you what kind of, uh, you know, equipment you can use and chalk you can use. So right. those sort of issues you don't have to deal with uh, for a home gym. Uh, so some of the considerations you, we, you just uh, mentioned, what, what sort of equipment should we look at? Um, so the basic umbrella of what you want to look for is whether it's space efficient. So if you can get equipment that's more versatile, where you can have a piece of equipment that can be used for a number of different purposes, that would be ideal. Uh, you're not going to get a machine for bicep curls, a machine for leg extensions, a machine, you know what I mean? So a gym might have that... Uh, you know that option of, of having a machine for every single exercise, but here you want uh, you want you got to think of uh, space efficiency. So you want equipment that's right. versatile, minimalist, um, and ideally for most people anyway who are considering a, a home gym, cost is an issue. So you want right. cost effective equipment, or cost efficient equipment as well. And that comes into the question of whether you want to get it new or used. You obviously have more options if you're going for for new. And there's usually more time involved if you're going with used because you got to look, search around. But I found a lot of my own gym equipment uh, through Kijiji, Craigslist. Um, they also have a there's a, a few shops um, or sort of uh, reselling studios that sell reconditioned equipment or from gyms that close down and they sell it at a at a bargain. So I've got a few things right. there as well. Other considerations are location. Now obviously it's at your place because it's a home gym, but um, whether it's going to be in your basement. Uh, you're going to use your garage, whether you have a spare room you're going to use, uh, if you have a shed that's big enough. Uh, and some people, like I trained for a while just at a local park um, with some of the accessories I got, jungle gym straps, etc. So, uh, and I still like training at the park sometimes for bodyweight exercises just for fun on the, on the weekend. So you got to consider what space you have uh, and how much overhead. Like I have my gym in the basement, but I wasn't able to finish... Um, some of the, the ceiling just to make sure I allowed room for myself to do standing overhead work. Um, a garage is great. I have actually some uh, stuff like ty uh, tractor tires and sleds and uh, you know big concrete stones and stuff like that. Farmer's walk apparatus. Uh, strongman gear in my garage. Uh, but then it, it limits space for your vehicle. So I mean you know my yeah, wife's, yeah. Not, w wife's not a big fan of that. Um, right. And then spare room, you know, you obviously you're using up a room of your house that could have other uses. So you got to just weigh your options based on the space that you need and uh, how much overhead it is and what other uh, uses that space might have. Um, I mean, we'll look at the, the different options for equipment. This might be, you know, pretty basic, but for others that are watching, might be looking at the very minimum, the bare minimum 
for starting a home gym. And this is what I recommend and some of the stuff I started with. Uh, just a basic floor mat you can throw down anywhere and a set of bands. Now, even these basic adjustable resistance bands are great. Um, you could also use the, uh, the, you know, the jump stretch or powerlifting bands as well. But as long as you can get a variety of tensions and you can get enough tension, they're not ideal, but they're great for being portable, taking up minimal space, and being very cost efficient. So when you're first starting out, it's a good adjunct to your body weight exercises. And that, that's really where you want to focus on when you're first starting a, a gym is what can you do with your own body weight to, make a, to give yourself a challenging workout. Uh, suspension straps such as the TRX, uh, Jungle Gym, Blast Straps. Everybody knows should be pretty familiar with uh, those sort of uh, suspension straps. You can just throw over a door, um, over a chin-up bar, and you can get a pretty good... Uh, it gives you a variety of different body weight exercises you can do with that. Mm -hmm. Door-mounted chin-up bar is the simplest way to go. Now, also here, uh, we mentioned a ball. It's great for certain exercises like hamstrings uh, uh, for using in place of a bench if you don't have a bench. Uh, I'm not a big proponent of doing stability work um, or you know standing on whoopee cushions and wobbly boards and stuff but the ball does have its place in a basic home gym this is one of those very simple door mounted chin up bars you can get them for like 15 20 bucks and if you can get them used you can get them even cheaper um, you know some of them can go up to like 50 bucks but for a basic piece of home gym equipment that can fit around you know the most people's uh, door door frames uh, that's a good starter and then something to do dips on um, you can get a piece of equipment like this that is basically a, a chin dip stand that has a combination of both. That mm -hmm. depends on how much overhead room you have and how much floor space you want to take up. Because the next evolution uh, towards a home gym would be moving from just body weight stuff towards free weight movements. Okay. And this is where I'd recommend getting an Olympic barbell set. So just a bar and plates. Now my first bar that I got was from the, one of the gyms I was working at had an old rusted one that they're getting rid of and I just got it free so I mean you can pick and I've and since then I've found bars that uh, on Kijiji and Craigslist selling them cheap or as in set so I got a couple of bars now so you can get a weight set like this a 300 pound Olympic barbell set they vary in price but if you buy it as a set even new you can still get a good deal on it but I uh, when I got my first set I just bought weights whenever I could wherever I could find them used um, steel weights. So, I mean, you can shop around. In my experience, you can still get Olympic stuff, Olympic weight sets, pretty inexpensively. Welcome to the Barbarian Strong take you on a tour of the gym and talk about what I would recommend if you're just starting out with a basic home gym for beginners. This is the sort of equipment that I used when my main concern was space and cost. So this is what I recommend. 